Now that we've covered Proton Drive, I'll move on to the Passwords Manager app called Proton Pass. Proton Pass manages not just your login credentials, but a wide range of information can be saved here. As you can already see from this screen, things like notes, credit cards, and even identity documents can be saved. But the first thing we want to do is organize where they're saved. And I can do this by creating vaults. If I click on this purple icon, I can see a vault already exists called personal. But if I create a new vault here, maybe something called work, I can create a different area for this sensitive information. Be sure to pick an icon and a color to differentiate it. Then click on Create Vault. The great thing about vaults is they can actually be shared with others. So if I click on this vertical ellipsis for my personal vault, then select Share, I can enter somebody else's email address, then click on Continue to share it with them. There are different access levels. The first one is Viewer, meaning they can look at the information inside it. So they can see the passwords, they can see the identity documents. Or I can choose Editor. This allows them to see and modify that information. The only difference between Editor and Admin is that an admin can actually remove people from the vault. Once you've picked the right one for you, click on Continue. It will give you a review of this information and then we'll click Share Vault. So now that we've organized where our information is going to be saved, let's actually put in some passwords. Let's switch over to iPhone because I personally find that I'm creating things and needing to share things a lot more from my phone than from my iPad. Click on Create Login. And here we can enter things like emails and passwords that we can use to log into our account wherever we are online. But it's not necessarily the easiest way going into the app first. We normally make these credentials in Safari. So let me head there and show you how we can do that. I'm on the Proton website here, and I'm just going to create a random email address. The first thing that happens when I click on the username field, though, is that the Apple Passwords app pops up. It's offering to log in with the credentials that I already saved into that app. But we want to use the Proton Pass app. This can actually be managed if we head over to the settings for iPhone. Scroll down to General, then select Autofill and Passwords. Here we can see all applications saved onto our device that can manage passwords, and specifically autofill them. I've got Apple's Passwords app and Proton Pass enabled, but I only want to use Proton Pass, so let me turn off the Passwords app. And I'll do the same down below for a setup codes in. You've certainly interacted with this by now, where you'll log in with a username and password. Then you'll have to provide a six digit code that's SMS to you or sent via email. Here we're going to make sure that the credentials which allow that to happen are saved into Proton Pass. So let me head back over to Safari. For the username, so far I've just used some randomized letters to get us going. And when I tap on the passwords field, the keyboard will appear, as well as a button that says passwords, which I'll click now. For privacy purposes, the screen recording does not allow the keyboard or that passwords button to appear. Not even when I screenshot my phone, so you'll just have to trust me that it's there. When you do click on the passwords button though, this screen appears. So instead of accessing the Apple Passwords app, we're in the Proton Pass app. And from here, we can click on Create Login. And we're essentially back to the page we saw before when we were in the app, except now we can auto-generate some of that information and have it put directly into the Safari web page. When I click on Email or Username, two options appear above the keyboard. I'm going to click this one that says Hide My Email. We'll delve into the advanced options in a little bit, but essentially it's randomized an email address that I can use only for this login credential. It's a way of protecting your personal email address. Anything that's sent to proton.me.flatted111 will be forwarded to darcy underscore SEO at proton.me. So I'll click on confirm, and we'll do the same for password. See, it's saying we can generate a password. And here we can play around with how sophisticated it will be. Right now it's set to random, so random letters, numbers, and symbols. I can increase the amount of characters. 
and change the type to a memorable password. Things that are familiar if I want to commit this password to memory. Capitalize is turned on, but we can toggle this if we only want lowercase letters. This can be customized even further by clicking on advanced options. So in the first place, we can move this slider to indicate how many words we actually want in our password. Notice that it changes from strong to weak, indicating how good this password actually is. A weaker one can be more easily guessed. I can change what kind of symbol will separate the words. You might need to change it to something like numbers if the account you're trying to create doesn't support symbols in passwords. And of course, we can still toggle the capitalization and whether there are numbers at all in the password. When you're finished setting up, click on Create and Autofill. And see now it's already pasted that password we just created directly into the field. Let me head back to the actual ProtonPass app now, and we'll go a little bit deeper with Hide My Email aliases. Simply selecting this area in the app will create a new one. The first thing you need to do is create a title for it. So say if I'm using one with Proton, I'll type in Proton here. And it actually uses the title as a prefix for your randomized email. So now we've got proton.diploma790 at passinbox.com. Notice if I remove the prefix, it prevents me from saving the email. You have to have a prefix. If I scroll down, you can modify the suffix or where the emails will be forwarded onto, but I'll keep these the same for now and just add in a note. This note is a great way to add context into this randomized email address. Even just as simple as reminding you what it's for or what its purpose is. If I click on add more, we can put in more text or even a 2FA security key, but we're gonna explore that security feature in a few moments. For now, just click on create and we've got it saved directly into the app. The front page for ProtonPass is different now. If I click on the bottom left icon, this is it. It no longer will show those panels. If I wanna create more credentials, I'll click on the plus button instead and select from this list. Click on other and you'll see a variety of templates for different kinds of information, broken up into different categories. So for technology, you might have a software license or a Wi-Fi network that you wanna save securely in ProtonPass. The same can be said for a bank account or a crypto wallet. You may even want to save your driver's license or your passport directly into the app. ProtonPass comes with extra security features that can be found by clicking on this shield icon at the bottom. The first of which is dark web monitoring. Picture a situation where a company's information has been hacked and is being sold online. This can be information like your account login details. Companies like Proton will monitor the web for that information. And when it detects that your login credentials have been found online, it will alert you. This way, you'll know ahead of time to actually change those details so that nobody can access your account. Proton will also suggest password changes if it detects a weak password or a reused password. For instance, here, it's saying this account that I have with Apple has a weak password. When I click on it, I can see the details. And if I actually show the password, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is a very insecure password. And I should go ahead and change it if I wanna continue having secure access to that account. As an additional layer of security for the app itself, I'll click on the person icon at the bottom and make sure I'm using either Face ID or a PIN as security to log into the app. If I do select PIN code, it will ask for a series of numbers. Again, the keyboard is not appearing in this section because I'm doing a screen recording. But for now, I'll stick with Face ID. I think the biometrics is a bit more secure. Another handy feature in this section is generated passwords, which you can find down just a little bit. Here are passwords that I've created through ProtonPass that haven't necessarily been saved as credentials. I think we've all had that experience where we're trying to create login details, but for whatever reason, it hasn't saved into the passwords app, or in this case, Proton. In this area, you'll see a two week history of these passwords. You can view them by clicking the eye icon, 
Or if you click on the vertical ellipses, you can copy the password, remove it from history, or most importantly, actually create a login with it.